So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview, recorded live on blogtalkradio.com from the new media and American League Baseball capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. Let's be honest. Some might believe Kelly McCarty's career path is heading down the ladder rather than up. She first came to notice as Miss USA in 1991. That led to appearances on Beverly Hills 90210 and Melrose Place, as well as several episodes of Even Steven, starring a young Shia LaBeouf, and in 2006, the role of Beth Wallace on the NBC soap opera Passions. Pretty hot stuff, right? But not hot enough for Kelly. She's doing porn now. Most people probably think her life must have taken a wrong turn. How many once successful actors, with the exception of Dustin Diamond, who played Screech on Saved by the Bell, intentionally wind up having sex on film? But that's a new direction Kelly McCarty has chosen. She promoted her latest film, Faithless, produced by one of the more reputable adult film producers, Vivid, on The Howard Stern Show. And now she's going to talk to me. If you're easily offended, this will be your only warning to switch over to the fly lady or Dr. Blondstein. This next hour is for the grown-ups. Kelly, welcome to Mr. Media. Hey, thanks, thanks for having me. Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good. So, uh, Kelly, do I smell the hand of Tabitha Lennox in any of this? <laughs> Possibly. That's a good call. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I guess one of us should explain that, that uh, she was kind of the guiding hand behind a lot of what went on on Passions for years. So All kinds of uh, witchery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm in history, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I, I'm, I'm assuming I'm not the first person to question your latest career move, right? Um, get in line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's uh, been the only question I've been uh, answering lately, that's for sure, which I don't mind. <laughs> I mean, it's a legitimate question. Yeah. Are, are you surprised that people would question it or that, you know, they're even that interested? Well, I'm a little surprised that they're that interested, but um, I'm not surprised that they're questioning it. It certainly is, you know, a little bit different uh, from past Miss USA's and soap stars to, to go into, you know, this world. But so, yeah, I don't mind answering the question. Okay. Well, I got plenty of questions. And, um, <laughs> um, but I, I want to open this up to uh, listeners. I know we've, we've got a, a number of people in the web chat. And okay. so if you've got a comment or a question for former uh, Miss USA Kelly McCarty, uh, now starring in her first adult film, Faithless, give us a call, one six four six. Five nine five three one three five. You can also check out her website www.kellykelliusa.com. So, uh, uh, Kelly, I'm sorry. Do you have a radio on or something in the background? No, I didn't know we were doing an interview, so I'm not at home. But um, let me oh, try got to it. find a little nope. bit closer place or a uh, nope. quieter. How's that? Not a problem. Thank you. Okay. So. Before we get to Faithless, which we will talk plenty about, let's back up a little bit. How did you come to enter Miss USA pageant? I entered the pageant world when I was 17, and my mom wanted me to do the local pageant, which was for um, Miss Liberal, funny enough. Um, my the hometown <laughs> in, in Kansas was, is Liberal, Kansas, which they're not um, at all. Um, <laughs> you know, pretty uh, pretty conservative out there. But, um, yeah, my mom really wanted me to do it, and I didn't have any interest in doing a pageant, but she sort of forced me into it, so I had no choice. And I was just, I was, you know, really um, into sports. I was a jock growing up, so the thought of having to wear, you know, high heels and learn how to walk correctly and do my makeup a certain way was not of any interest to me, but it was to my mom, so... That's how it started. Were you surprised when you won? Um, yeah, I was surprised. I mean, that, that was just the local pageant. And then, um, so I won that and then went on to Miss Kansas. This was for the Miss America system. 
and mm-hmm. I just had a really horrible experience. They were very, very conservative, very, very uptight, and I had really nothing in common with the people in general or the other girls that were in the pageant. And the night after it ended, um, obviously didn't win, um, a guy from the Miss USA uh, side uh, from Miss Kansas, he was the director at the time, and he came up to me and said, listen, I think you you should come over to our side and do my pageant. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I think I'm sort of done. But it, then my mom stepped in and said, yeah, she'd love to do it. So that was it. <laughs> and so she he said, trust me, it's not like this one. We have a lot of fun. And I was really hesitant. But again, you know, my mom said, just do it. So I did, and I found out that the girls actually – like uh, like to hang out and and they were pretty normal eating pizza at night. Um, they cursed a lot. They were really <laughs> fun girls to hang out with. And I'm like, okay, I think I could hang with this. So I did that three years. I was second runner up. I went on. I went back and I was first runner up. And then the third try, I won Miss Kansas in '91. Wow. Now I I want to go back a minute because I I have I, I assume I'm not the only person in the room listening to this who's, who's thinking, okay, what was so different between the girls in the uh, Miss Kansas and, and <laughs> Miss America pageant? What, you know, and was it, you know, was it, first of all, was it a room full of virgins? Is that what we're talking about? Is it, uh, what, what was it? Well, um, you know, the whole vibe in general from my experience on the Miss America side was they go out of their way because they want to be taken very, very seriously, and it's called a scholarship pageant. So the the, the women uh, in general like to let people know, no, this is not, I'm not in a beauty pageant, I'm in a scholarship pageant. And the reality <laughs> is, the girl, well, I'm, I won't, okay, I won't even say that, but um, in general, they're just very conservative. And the girls on the Miss USA side, they, I mean, the Miss USA pageant in general, they their motto is we can be beautiful and we can be smart. And there's more interview competition in the Miss USA versus mm. Miss America who has like the talent, singing, dancing, whatever. So I I I, I don't know. It was just something that I clicked with. Um, they were just a little bit more laid back in general. Mm. Uh, um and I, I like that you, you mentioned that the, with the Miss USA group, you could curse and hang oh, out yeah. and have pizza. Uh, yeah, probably I, not a lot I, I of food. Mean, I, I'm sorry, what? Go ahead. I was going to say probably not a food, lot of, of not a lot of food being eaten by the, the Miss Kansas, Miss uh, Miss America contestants, and. Um, <laughs> you know what? It wasn't even that the food consumption was that different. It was just that they were just extremely conservative to the point where I didn't buy any of it you know Mm -hmm. um it just it just wasn't real to me and the girls that I met in the Miss USA system were very very cool girls like girls that I would want to go out and and hang with you know Mm -hmm. and uh what was I I assume that you you had a year as Miss USA going out and about uh what was that like What, what was the best of it what was the worst of it well, both sort of the same. I mean, it was unbelievable the amount of time spent traveling and in and at the same time a lot of travel. So it was it was great, but it was it was a big job. Um it was about 70% of the time just traveling town to town, city to city. Uh went on a USO tour, which was definitely my favorite part because this was right after the Gulf War. And so we were meeting military men and women who hadn't seen Americans in general, let alone pretty girls in a long, long time, you know. (laughs) So they were very, very thankful to just have Americans come and hang out with them for, you know, a few hours. And and it was just so moving. I have such a huge appreciation for the military in general. I'm certainly hoping that this war, you know, should have ended and never happened. But, my gosh, the military men and women, they devote their lives to that. And so that was really, it was just such a moving experience. Um, Mm. And then I got to meet the president and and do stuff like that. And I did a lot of charity work, Um, spoke to a lot of women's groups, spoke to a lot of kids, 
Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Went to about 80 J.C. Penny stores all over the country, which was a total trip, and sign autographs, <laughs> just stuff like that. But in general, it was really, really positive and a lot of fun. And then uh, you gra- you uh, uh, evolved your career. Your Miss USA time ended, and eventually you started acting. You did. You were in a lot of shows. I was looking over your listing on IMDb. I mean, you know, it, it, it's it's not like you've just done one thing. No, I mean, it, it, you know, it took it took some time to actually sort of start working, and a lot of auditions that went nowhere, and a lot mm-hmm. of. Um, rejection definitely but once i sort of start got in the groove and started booking things it was it was pretty consistent um you know a lot of fun on the disney stuff the melrose place and 90210 and and then once i booked uh passions it was just such a blessing to have a consistent job just knowing every day you woke up you were going to go somewhere and actually make some money for a change. <laughs> so that was nice. Um, uh, before we get to passions, I want to ask you about Melrose. I know you I think you were just on there for maybe one, maybe two episodes, but did you, did you cross paths with uh, uh, Thomas Calabro? Um, I did, but I mean, it was just, he was on the set the same time I was, but that, that was, it was sort of like, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. And that was it. Hmm. I just wondered, because he's going to be on the show on Thursday. I just wondered if there's anything uh, I, I should ask him. Um, <laughs> he, would never, um, he wouldn't remember me at, at all. I would, Of course, I remember okay. him. Gorgeous man. But. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let, let's talk about passions. I mean, it seemed like it, it, it must have been a great career move. But, of course, the, the crazy show was canceled not long after. Well, I was on there for seven years, so by the time they I'm killed me off, I was already off the show. Oh, I, I'm so, well. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't realize you were on there for seven years. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. <time laughs> <it did. laughs> yeah. Wow. That, I mean, that's a you know, that's a that's a real that's a real long term job. Um, it, was a, it was a good run. I I have to say. What was the craziest thing that was ever written for your character? Oh my God, where do I start? I mean, the craziness. You know, my 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 character started out being very nice and very normal, and they originally had just hired me to do five episodes, and hmm. then they continued to bring me back, and I continued to be nice and normal for a long time. And a lot of times on the soap, they have um, like when we'll take a five, they keep the booms on, and I don't know if this is what really happened, but. I remember several times having conversations with people on the set, and they were asking me, uh, well, what what would be, like, your ideal role, or what do you really want to do? And I would always say, oh, I want to play crazy. I want to play psycho-, psycho. And then one day I got a script, and then it sort of was written a little bit different. And I'm like, hmm, maybe I can just sort of try and go there, and let me see what they do. And sure enough, mm-hmm. they let me kind of go there, and then I just sort of went like crazier and crazier to the point where it was just like full on nuts. <laughs> um, so I would say probably the, well, one of the craziest things was I faked a pregnancy and I dug um, a huge hole down in um, my basement and I kept the woman who I was trying to take her man from, I kept her down there for nine months and she was really pregnant and then after she delivered her baby I passed it off as my own and tried to kill her off so that was one <laughs> <laughs> and I walked around with um uh, like a sugar sack on my belly for months and uh, one of the I remember I was supposed to go to the doctor and somehow it got a puncture in the bag so I was walking through the gynecologist's office with the sugar like streaming out of the be- my belly and then, of course, the doctor caught on and was like, wait a minute, and calling the cops and stuff like that. And somehow I always ended up being able to sort of talk my way out of things. <laughs> it, it, now, this was a show, I remember, you know, I'm not a big soap guy, but I remember being home sick one day. And, and, yeah, well, okay. I'm, just, <laughs> no, I'm, it, I'm telling you, 
I, I, I tune past it and I see um, uh, this little person. I don't I don't want to use a more derogatory term. And I'm like, what on earth is this? What am I looking at here? I mean, it's not that there's anything wrong with the little person, but this the storyline that I saw that day was so bizarre. Well, the storyline was that he played a he was a doll that would come to life. So oh, that's it. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, is it hard to imagine why that show didn't, didn't last? Yeah. Oh, well, there's definitely you know a certain audience that that really loved it. Other people were like, I cannot watch that like nonsense. But there's a certain you know audience out there that just really like loved the fact that you know we could sort of make fun of ourselves and and they and it was like you were sitting back knowing that you you were part of this funny joke and but like for me luckily my character was super fun to play and and being able to be super crazy so i just i just had a ball with it every day hmm. sounds like it would be a fun show to uh to come in each day and see the script and see what they had in mind for you. Oh yeah, I mean, I would I would do that for as long as they wanted to pay me. I mean, I just the crazier the better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I know what everyone wants to know. So let's talk um, in a minute about the end of passion and the start of faith first. And uh-huh. before we do that, I want to I want to give out our phone number again. Uh, yeah. I understand from the web chat that some people may be having a little trouble with it. It's uh, 1-646-595-3135 if you'd like to call in and uh, talk to Kelly uh, McCarty, uh, who's uh, now starring in her first adult film, uh, Faithless. Uh, you can also visit her website at www.kellyusa.com. And before I, before I ask you my next question, I want to tell you that uh, – Someone in the uh, web chat named Subdude for Kelly says uh, he or she went to high school with you and that you are a super person. <laughs> oh, well, I wish I knew who it was. That's very sweet. Well, may- maybe uh, maybe we can uh, convince uh, Subdude for Kelly to uh, call in or at least give us a hint uh, as to his or her. I guess it must be a him, Subdude. Um, uh, so anyway, give us a call. Talk to Kelly. Uh, so... Tell us about life between the end of passions and the start of faithless. What was going on in your personal and professional lives, you know, as the, as passions ended and uh, you headed to this? Um, after passions ended, I was just pretty exhausted. Um, it was a pretty gnarly schedule for a lot of years, so I was happy to get to sleep in and sleep late <laughs> for most mornings and, and just spend time at home. I, I love being home um, with my dogs and just doing stuff around the house. I'm really a homebody. So that was a nice change after a long run, you know, on the show. And Mm -hmm. um, then I was able to just go back and get back into my yoga, and I actually got uh, yoga certified and got um, uh, certified as a bartender just because I thought it would be fun. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, if anyone needs a bartender out there, I'm available. (laughs) <laughs> oh, um, nice. that'll start the calls coming. <laughs> yeah, private parties or whatever. Um, <laughs> oh God. Yeah. <laughs> no, so so really, it was just a nice time for me to take a break, and you know, I'd done really well financially on the soap, so it was and did some good investing, so it was a chance for me to just relax and travel a little bit and go home and see my family and you know that kind of thing. Um, and then one day I just sort of, um, let's see, I finished bartending school and I'm like, well, I'm sort of bored. Um, and I've always been intrigued with the adult industry, although I've never been a big porn watcher and I don't know anybody in the industry. I just thought maybe I'll see what it, what it's all about. And I, and that's how, that's how it started. And then I started kind of doing my own, uh, research to check out the different um, adult companies and thinking that maybe I should uh, try my hand at adult films. I don't know. I, maybe, maybe I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm dense here, but this seems like a big leap for most people, isn't it? <laughs> I know it totally is. I never in a million years thought that that's something that I it never entered my mind. 
I mean, I, I guess if I was like a big porn watcher and just obsessed with porn and whatever, like going to the porn conventions, you could go, oh, yeah, no, Kelly's kind of like, you know, she's she's like that. She's kinky like that. But I couldn't be more opposite. I'm like, you know, hanging at the dog park and, and going to yoga and doing laundry and just normal everyday stuff. So, honestly, when it came to my mind, I don't know who put that in my head, but it was there, and it was, like, stuck. So I just had to go with it. Uh, now, um, from what I've read, correct me if I'm wrong, you're, you're married, aren't you? Um, I just recently went through a divorce, and no, it had nothing uh, to do with me. <laughs> it, okay. was in, it was already um, in place and happening uh long before I, I decided to do the movie, so not related. Oh, okay. All right, so that, that answer, well, no, I didn't think it was related. I just thought if you were, if you were married, what, a, what an odd choice. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you'd be surprised how many um, adult film stars out there are married and have very, very normal lives other than the fact that they have sex on camera for money and lead pretty normal lives. Well, um, people don't want to believe I, that. People people assume that they're you know having sex twenty four seven and they're walking around looking like porn stars twenty four seven. But you you could walk past many most of them on the street and you wouldn't know unless you're a big porn watcher. You wouldn't <laughs> even know who they were. Well, uh, Kelly, some people I think would assume that to take a role in an adult film, uh, you must either be an exhibitionist or extremely comfortable with your sexuality. A any of that possible? Um, I don't think that I could do what I did if I wasn't comfortable with my sexuality. And um, I've never had sex on camera uh, before that. But I thought, you know what, it seems like people are out there doing it just for fun and, you know, in their bedrooms. But I would rather, like, do it on a bigger budget. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> Good. <laughs> You're, you're, uh, well, I have to, I actually have to pose the other theory, the, the, uh, the, the Howard Stern theory of why someone goes into porn, and that's, he always brings up the same thing, and you were on his show, so I'm, I'm just gonna bring it up. He, he, he always believes that the person doing this must have been, uh, abused as a child or a teen, and that there'd be no other reason that you would yeah. turn to this. Yeah, um, I wish I had a really gnarly story, you know, for your listeners, that I could say this terrible thing happened to me, but to be honest, I I never had any issues as a kid. I, I was never abused sexually, uh, physically in any way, so it's just the fact that I really like having sex and I like acting, so it's just pretty hmm. simple. It's as simple as that. Combines the two. So your mother, <laughs> your mother pu pushed you into the pageants, which led to everything else. Um, how does I'm assuming your mother is still around? How does she feel about this? Um, she she said when I told her, I called her. I said, Mom, I just want you to know that um, I did a movie, and she's like, You did? When? And why didn't you tell me? And I go, Well, I was just sort of <laughs> just to tell you. And she's like, Well, what is it? And I said, Well, it's an X-rated movie. And she's like, Oh, really? Why? And I go, Well, I felt like it. She's like, Okay. Um, she goes, well, we've never, you know, we're always, we're never surprised when you call us and, you know, you, you say you're going to do this or that. And, and she said, I guess I can't ground you, um, so I guess I'll just have to support <laughs> you once again, you know. I mean, even when I called to tell her that I, went to, I was going to bartending school, she's like, what? Why? And I'm like, why not? I just feel like it. <laughs> Pretty much if I feel like it, I do it. Uh, you know, it's funny, I, as you were saying that, I think of something my mother said to me in, uh, in high school or college, and uh, I had gotten into uh, some trouble at school or something stupid, and my mother said to me at the time, she said, you know, I may not agree with the things you choose to do, but I will always support you, and I've always remembered that, and it sounds like your mother has a similar attitude. Yeah, I think our, our mothers would get along really well. I mean, my mom's just very cool, and and I think that the fact that I'm so open-minded and I have a free spirit is partially because of her. Mm. Now, I have to tell you, there's some interesting chatter going on here. There's a live uh, 
uh, web chat that accompanies uh, Mr. Media interviews, and uh, uh, subdued for Kelly, who uh, uh, I guess knows you and is not going to tell us how, um, said uh, that you had uh, really cool parents, uh, stepdad too, uh, and says that your mom is really hot. Yeah, my mom, I mean, my mom's a gorgeous woman, um, but that's really nice of him to say that or whoever <laughs> is saying that. Uh, I wish I knew. But, yeah, my mom my mom still wears a bikini, and she's in her 60s, so there you go. Wow. Uh, he also says that uh, liberal Kansas is an oxymoron, so. Um, <laughs> I couldn't be more opposite. I will I, I will interrupt all the, the chat about Faithless, and we'll come back to that in a minute, but we have a question from the uh, web chat. Uh, Mary Margaritaville, that's a good one, wants to know, okay. says, Hello, Kelly. Have you heard from any of the Passions cast? I, I'm sorry. Have I heard from any of the Passions cast? Yes. Um, I have heard from a couple of them, and it's in the tone of this. Oh my God, Kel, what, what, is this for real? <laughs> and then I call him back and I go, yeah, and they're like, what? Like, I'm friends with a porn star? That's so cool. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's good. Yeah, it's really positive. Um, I actually got a letter on my Facebook from one actress from Passions who I won't name, um, but she said, Oh my God, Kelly! No, no, run, run, run from those people! You're too good for that. And I didn't write her back, but I start. I was I was laughing because I was not approached by them. I approached them myself. <laughs> you know, I went to Vivid and said, "Hey, do you guys want to make a movie with me?" And so, oh, you know, I'm sure the perception is I was walking down the street and someone said, "Hey, listen, I've got this dirty movie. Are you, you want to be in it?" <laughs> and be more opposite. Uh, what did you uh, What did you make of the uh, the culture uh, at Vivid and in producing the movie? How different uh, were the people and just the attitudes than what you had experienced at their Passions and everywhere else that you had worked? Um, well, you know, in general, I think the adult world is not used to learning a whole lot of lines um, for the <laughs> for the movies. I'm like coming from a soap where you know you're learning thirty to sixty pages of dialogue a night. It's just, you know, unheard of. Um, so that was the biggest difference. And then, obviously, you know, we're really having sex as opposed to pretending to have sex, which, you know, we're doing all the time on Passions. And But besides that, everybody was very um, normal. I, I didn't really know what to expect, but when I went to Vivid, when I went to Vivid and, and spoke to Stephen Hirsch, who's... Um, the president, he was, you know, you walk into his office and I didn't know what to, if, if he was going to have porn, you know, going on all the screens or if he was going to you know, be dressed in like a button, open up shirt with gold chains. And I walk into his office and it's just like pristine. He's got pictures of his kids behind his desk. Um, it just like any other company other than the fact that they are filming people having sex couldn't i mean that's the only difference well and and you 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 mentioned something there that honest to god i hadn't even i hadn't even thought about in the context you mentioned it and that is that sure on passions and and maybe other places uh you're pretending to have sex well here you are in front of the camera uh all the clothes are off at some point and you really are having sex i mean Uh was there a moment when you thought to yourself okay this really is different (laughs) Um, when the lighting guy was trying to get the crotch shot just right, that was probably the biggest (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure why I'm laughing. I've never had my crotch, like, lit. (laughs) (laughs) Other than that, no, not really. (laughs) Did you... God. (laughs) <laughs> did you feel? Uh, yeah, I mean, did, did you feel? Um, what, what am I? What am I trying to ask you here? Um, uh, okay did, with it? Did, did, well, it's sort of that, but did you feel any kind of inhibition at that point when you realized, yeah, he's lighting my crotch? I mean, you're thinking, okay. Uh, no, not really. I mean, once I decided to do it, I just said that this is what I'm doing today. I'm going to have sex on camera, so I'm 
I I plan to enjoy it, and I did. It was actually really fun. <laughs> um, and then was I, there I any... went home after and went and made dinner. <laughs> was there anything that you told the producers that you would not do in front of the cameras? Um. Well, there's a whole list of things in my contract, and I hmm. I, I just wanted to have normal straight sex one guy one girl and keep it pretty pretty safe and and because it was the first time I was ever doing it and I didn't want to do anything crazy and I'm not really into doing like a lot of crazy stuff anyway and I know that sounds funny coming from someone who was on a soap and now they're doing porn but um I'm pretty normal in that sense I think as far as sex goes so I kept it pretty straight um, a couple things from the uh, web chat. Uh, Juan, Juan Kirk says, uh, I love you, Kelly. Thanks for adding me in your Facebook. And um, uh, you, V. Lumsden, Juan. oh, there you go. Uh, v. Lumsden, 2009, says, Kelly, and I was going to ask this too, do you plan on doing any more X-rated movies? I might. I'm not sure yet. Um, the the offer is there uh, as to whether I do it. I'm not sure. I'm I'm getting... Some really cool, fun other offers, um, a reality show offer, and I have two books that I'm getting ready to start on. And mm. so I've just been busy, you know, prom- promoting Faithless right now. So I will let you know if I decide to. Hmm. Um, did... Uh was there was there a difference technically between shooting Faithless and an episode of a TV show, other than obviously the you know lighting your crotch? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know they shoot them very quickly. We shot the whole movie in ten days, so um, it's just about which is fine. And I, I actually like working fast like that because on a soap there's no time to mess around. You know we shoot the scene and hopefully everybody gets their dialogue right and then you move on. And that's kind of how it was here with with the movie. So I, I prefer instead of drawing something out, you know, for for weeks or months, I like I like doing do it the fast way. Did you have any input on the script? Uh, like, could we have some extra lines in here, please? Yeah, no, I I um, co-wrote the movie, so I had um, a lot of influence. I pretty much. Came up, I gave them the idea of what I wanted to do, and then we just kept tweaking it until I was happy with it. Um, more more ch- uh, chatter from the uh, web chat. Uh, Juan, uh, Juan says that he, uh, he hopes that you do make another X-rated movie or maybe a remake of, of the movie Taboo. Of the movie Taboo? Um, I'm not sure if I know that movie. Juan, you're 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 proposing a movie here to someone who actually is, is made it an adult film, but hasn't watched a lot of them. So <laughs> you may be, gonna have maybe maybe off track here. Um, maybe he can Facebook me and and give me the the plot, uh, and I'll think about it. But are you yeah, are you watching? Be- are you watching any more adult films as a result of being in one and meeting people in the industry? No, and I only met the people that I did the movie with. I don't know anybody else in the industry. Um, we don't really, I mean, I don't hang out with any of them. And it's just kind of like any other TV show or movie set. You know, you hang out while you're there, and then you always say, oh, you exchange numbers, and, oh, let's get together for dinner, and then you never do. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's just always like that. It's sort of a a joke in Hollywood, you know, because you've become so close to these people. But, no, I mean, it was only 10 days with these people, so I was just, you know, we we shot the movie and then that was it. Now, you're uh, on Passions. You're with the same people month after month, obviously even year after year. Uh, there's people that you pretend to have relations with, uh, but you don't actually do it. Now, in Faithless, obviously you, you're you're having real sex with people. Is it... Is it a little awkward before and after you shoot the scene? Well, I was working with real pros. These people have been doing, these other actors have been doing this a long time. They work all the time. So it's just business as usual for them. It's not like we have to, like, you know, have a lot of chat, like, like, like chat each other up before or go for drinks or go for dinner. It's just like we show up. Everybody knows 
airplanes, and then the director says, okay, we're going to be here, and then you guys are going to move into this room and do this, and we're like, and for me, okay, I just follow direction. It was as simple mm. as that. Now, uh, because you, 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 you did choose to make the movie, you went to them, they didn't come to you, and you co-wrote the film, uh, did you also have some say in casting your co-stars? Yeah, I cast the whole thing. Ah, was there a casting couch? <laughs> no, but I, I certainly watched their movies ahead of time, so I knew, you know, what to expect. Oh God, I'm going to hate myself for asking this, but what were you looking for? <laughs> uh, well, what every girl's looking for. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if I can, well, if you really want to know, I was looking for, you know, a good-looking large penis. There you go. You can say it. It's fine. We're, we're, uh, we told people to go away from the show at the beginning if they, if they couldn't handle the, uh, the subject. So, all right. So you're honest about that. No, it also, I mean, I just, it was more of like when they came in to audition, it was just the vibe and the rapport I had with them, just talking to them. I'm like, is this someone that I would want to have sex with? And mm-hmm. it was clear right when they walked in the room, I was like, that guy, definitely no, that guy, definitely yes. Mm-hmm. I think it's like, in, in general, in most women, I think, you know, if you go out on a date, you know when the guy, you get in the car with the guy or he comes in to pick you up, you know within a couple seconds if you're going to have sex with that guy or not. Right. But, of course, in this case, you cast the movie. I don't know how far out you cast the movie before you actually do it. I was going to say do it, but I meant, you know, actually shoot the movie. Uh, you say do it. You know, I'm sorry? Yeah, you could say do it. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. But, I mean, how much time between casting it and actually shooting it? Let's see. I guess it was a couple months. Okay, so what I'm saying is, you know, this isn't going to happen, but we go out on a date, and you, you know probably in, you know, 30 minutes, uh, an hour, whatever. No, I know within, it's, like, the five yeah. minutes. Right, but so now you've you've said, okay, that's a guy I could have sex with, but then it actually doesn't happen for three months, and it's I don't know, it's kind of odd. <laughs> well, I know, but I mean, I was look, I, I wasn't looking to you know get in a relationship with a person. I'm looking to make a movie, so it was definitely you know from a just just professionally speaking. Okay, this is the person I want to play my husband. This is the person that I'm going to seduce, and. Mm-hmm. Then once I knew and, like, I picked the guys, I was really happy with my choices, and, you know, and and then that was it. Like I said, I watched several of their movies, and I knew what they were all about, so it, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think about it any further after that. Hmm. And, and I'm sorry, uh, did you, did you say that there was a scene with a, with another woman? Nope. There was not. It was strictly. Guy, girl. Guy, girl. Okay. Um, uh, your, uh, your, your friend from liberal Kansas, uh, wants to know about female domination and fetish. I have a feeling the answer to both is no. Um, I mean, I love women. I'm not opposed to being with another woman on camera, but I just like, in this first film I did, I just wanted to, to be guy girl. Um, but I'm not like a big fetish person. No. Okay. And, um, uh, this guy's going to keep asking me these questions. He needs to divulge who he is. <laughs> all, right. all right. Subdued for Kelly. That's it. I cannot ask any more of your questions until Kelly has some sense of who you are. So I'll, I'll, ask, uh, I'll ask V. Lumsden's uh, question, which I think we sort of touched on. Were you at all nervous uh, doing the movie and having sex with people you didn't know? Well, I mean, I'd met him ahead of time, and I felt comfortable, you know, when I when I did meet the two guys that I picked. I liked them, and so, you know, it, of course, it's a little bit nerve-wracking the first time, but then I just got into, I just got into it, and and like I said, I had a lot of fun, so hmm. it was a good experience overall. Now, one of the other differences between um, uh, shooting a TV show, a network TV show, and a an adult film for Vivid is, I'm guessing you probably had to go through HIV AIDS testing for this. Oh, absolutely. And what I did learn and what one of my concerns before I decided to do any of this was what what kind of testing that the actors are put through. And I knew 
the medical history of both guys that I was with for the, the past year. And um, the cool thing about the porn world is that if somebody comes down with something, they're not going to work. So they are very, very professional. They're not promiscuous. It's, um, it's probably safer in the porn world than it is in most people's everyday life. I don't know when's the last time that, you know, your listeners have asked to see actual medical history on paper of their past partners, but that was, you know, that's something that everybody in this industry does. Mm. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, Subdued uh, says that he will tell you who he is via Facebook. So you have okay. that to look forward to. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, another thing I found very interesting about all this um, is that uh, clearly, if, I, this is not a secret, you, you, you won Miss USA in 1991. Uh, anyone with a brain can do the math here that you're not a 21 year old girl making her first move in Hollywood. You're, oh, I God. think, you're uh, about late 30s? I'm 39. Okay. So one assumes that you're a big girl making your own adult decisions here, right? I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you, uh, uh, watched enough adult films now that you you have any favorites among the actors or actresses or have you seen any movies you particularly liked um i think the my favorite that i've seen because i actually liked um it was it kind of focused more on the storyline which i think a lot of women would prefer um if i'm going to watch a uh, porn then i would like to see or sort of get into the characters and the plot even though, you know, most of the porn world does not focus on that. And that's sort of one of my goals, if I do continue in this industry, is to kind of combine, let's say, Lifetime and the adult film industry. So Mm -hmm. it's Lifetime movies, which are for women, and then you've got the sex on top of it. That's the reason that all of these, you know, romance novels do so well with women, because they, they paint this amazing, sexy... Um, storyline that you can sort of just get lost in. For mm-hmm. me, that's what what I like, and I guess that's why I don't really watch porn is because I don't I haven't really seen movies that have much substance to them. Um, but I did like the masseuse and starred Jenna Jameson, and I, I mean, you know, who you know, if you're into porn, you love Jenna Jameson, and she's amazing. And and I also liked, and the reason that I requested Paul Thomas to direct my movie is because I saw the masseuse and I just really liked it and I was like this person gets gets it it's not just about the sex okay well uh, Kelly we've got a caller I, I hope this will be a good one um, hi do you have a question or comment for Kelly McCarty I don't hear anyone I don't either hi. We, we've got a caller do you, do you have a question or nope they hung up yeah, I think you're intimidating <laughs> I don't know what's been happening like that. People don't want to talk to me unless they're on a a Facebook or MySpace. (laughs) That's funny. Um, So I I, I was going to ask you what you were saying a minute ago, um, and I I could kick myself. I can't think of the woman's name, but uh, there was a woman who had done a lot of uh, uh, porn, I guess, in the 70s and 80s, and came to the conclusion that you have that there was not enough uh, just kind of straightforward – porn with uh, with storylines that you know that appealed more to women uh, could you see yourself you know producing and directing and actually you know making a full career out of this well i would definitely like to get into the directing side and the producing side if i can convince um you know somebody or a company hopefully vivid to to get into more of that you know combining like a good storyline with the sex I think that mm-hmm. in the mainstream world, we're so close to that, even though, you know, it's all simulated, um, it seems natural that that would be the next step. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and do you, do you have any uh, expectation that uh, if this doesn't work out or you get tired of it, that you'll be able to go back the other way to the, the, uh, the original Hollywood or the other Hollywood, so to speak? I mean, I'm already getting calls from mainstream, um, and 
you know, people have known me from the mainstream world for a lot of years, so it's not like I'm, you know, a desperate porn star trying to get into mainstream. I've already been there. So mm-hmm. I, I, um, I, I could flip-flop back and forth if I wanted. I think that more actors are probably going to start doing that, so I just decided to be one of the first. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Well, um, folks, you can, uh, you can find Kelly McCarty's first adult film, Faithless, at adult book and film stores everywhere, or you can, I think, order it online at her website, www.kellyusa.com. Am I, am I right about That's that? That's correct. Yep. That's right. All right. Terrific. And you can well, see the trailer okay. and see if you're into it or not. Ah. Well, Kelly, uh, this was a lot of fun. You were a you, you had good sense of humor, and uh, uh, it's good to, you know, whatever you do, take pride in it, and uh, I appreciate that. I, I, I hope that this is what you choose to do, that uh, you're very successful, and it works out very well for you. Oh, thank you. I, I hope so, too, and I really appreciate you having me on your show. It was fun. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that, and thanks so much for being on the show, and uh, maybe we'll get to talk again. Okay. Sounds good. Take care. Uh, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye. And for more great uh, interviews, uh, surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. It's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with uh, Legs McNeil, author of the book The Other Hollywood about the adult film industry, uh, as well as an interview with Billy Bob Thornton, uh, Kirk Douglas, and no, no real connection here. And uh, watch for my uh, Lost Tapes interview with Russ Myers, the adult film director. And please think about uh, please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites, whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, Pointer Online, Digital Journal, Podcast Pickle, Vox, Folio, Mediafly, Podfeed.net, Blueberry, Zencast, or Odeo. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman, A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N, dot com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. I always appreciate when you give up a little piece of your day, or as the case may be, your night, to spend it with us. Thanks, everybody. Come back real soon.